Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Ashman and Kay for uh, inviting me here to present among this elite group. Uh, uh, I'm a, a chemical engineer and polymer guy by training. Uh, I have a genuine interest in using polymers uh, for uh, uh, drug delivery. And this project actually be uh, began five years ago with the support from our Wallace Coulter uh, Translational Research Award. And by working with my uh, clinical and uh, pharmaceutical uh, investigators, my students, and the postdoc, uh, we have made a steady progress. And uh, so there are two main purposes <laughs> um, I come here uh, to present. One is to uh, make the field aware of my research in this particular application. And the second purpose, which is uh, more important, uh, to seek feedback uh, from expertise in this uh, field and so that I can incorporate uh, in my future work. Uh, glaucoma is the uh, leading cause, uh, cause of the uh, blindness in the world and uh, so far there's no cure for glaucoma. So patients have to rely on lifelong medication therapy and most uh, drugs um, have to be formulated into eye drops and uh, due to their limited uh, availability and those eye drop formulations have to be taken on a, uh, a daily ba basis. And you can see the, uh, the survey conducted in uh, 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 about 15 years ago uh, for, uh, about the patients, their preference on the uh, on the formulations available in the markets. So the majority pretend, uh, tend to uh, choose uh, less uh, uh, dosing frequency. So actually, in fact, the patient com compliance is the uh, number one issue for glaucoma medication. And um, because of the <laughs> excellent introduction uh, given by uh, Ashman and Kay, uh, so I can skip uh, some um, slides about the uh, topical routes and also the introduction about the barriers uh, for the drug delivery so that I can really focus on my own research. And the approach I uh, uh, started is that uh, using nanotechnology and click chemistry to develop safe, stable, long-acting topical dendromer gel formulations. And so we uh, are really proud of this approach because there are several aspects of the innovation uh, uh, for this approach. First of all, so with our in vitro and uh, um, a pilot uh, animal work, we demonstrate that uh, the uh, the anti-glaucoma drugs can be sustained release and show a longer uh, acting uh, efficacy. Um, and also we want to address uh, uh, proactively about the safety uh, issue using nanoparticles. So this is th the question we can't uh, get around about the safety of using nanoparticles and the polymers. And so uh, in, the, in my presentation, so I will spend a uh, majority time on the rationale and uh, to talk about why uh, we make progress and uh, being constantly um, developing new chemistries, uh, making uh, safe formulations. And the last one is that we want to develop a platform that can allow the ease of uh, storage and administration. I'll just give you a very brief background uh, to uh, introduction to Dangermer. Uh, Dangermer is the uh, newest generation of micromolecules, actually, uh, which has a his uh, history of uh, 30 years uh, si since the first uh, report uh, uh, given by uh, Dr. Tamalia in early uh, 80s. Uh, Dangermers um, are quite unique uh, in, uh, in, in, in polymers as a field because it has a highly branched structure and with uh, uh, perfect um, uh, uh, polydispersity, nearly one. And also you can see that so it has three distinct uh, uh, regions, the hydrophilic periphery and hydrophobic interior and the core. 
The hydrophobic interior that allow the hydrophobic compounds can be encapsulated, so that can be useful uh, for solubility enhancement. And the most amazing feature of, of Dangemer is that it has numerous surface groups available, so that allow uh, for the uh, uh, the um, uh, the chemistry uh, modification. And so we. Uh, including, uh, there's a lot of research labs are working on uh, Dangemer-based uh, nanomedicine, uh, <laughs> including us, and we uh, use the surface group and to modify uh, and to have different uh, functional entities, drugs, uh, nucleic acid, targeting ligand, imaging agents, as well as uh, polymers. And so, you can see, so because of the high loading capacity and the adaptability, uh, so Dangemer has a really promising future uh, in, uh, in, uh, in medicine. And uh, in this particular project, I uh, use a um, completely different way to use uh, uh, nanoparticle Dangemers. And so we uh, cross-link uh, Dangemers into form uh, a network, which is different from the conventional use of uh, Dangemers. And uh, so the reason why we want to uh, explore this route is that uh, we want to create, integrate a platform that can process the structure and functions of nanoparticles and a hydrogen network. And so the first, so the first generation we created and then published in our, our biomicromolecules in uh, 2010 is that we uh, uh, pegylated uh, Dangemer uh, uh, generation three, which has 32 uh, amine uh, surface groups, and then introduced a double bond through the acrylyl chloride to the terminal end of hydroxyl group available from uh, the attached pack, and then do UV curing, and then in the presence of the eosin Y uh, photoinitiating system. So we had success forming a hydrogel out of dangemer, pegylated dangemer in particular. And so we're, we're very excited about this, uh, this uh, uh, this results because this is the f uh, first time we uh, we uh, report uh, we use a PAM dangemer and to form a hydrogel, and also we um, uh, had success uh, modifying the dangemer uh, half generation. Uh, we use G three point five, uh, so which has a, a, a sixty four uh, carboxyl groups on the surface, and then we we pegylated G. 3.5, and then introduce our uh, acrylate group to the to the functional uh, uh, carrier, and then form the hydrogel. And although I didn't present here, so this one has really interesting uh, property because the presence of carboxyl group it shows a pH uh, sensitivity of the hydrogel, so that can. Uh, uh, the swelling and the degradation uh, uh, can be modulated um, uh, through the uh, surface uh, functionalization. And um, however, there's one limitation we noticed that is that so the when we introduce acrylic group to the danger, uh, to the dangemer uh, pack, however, so the amine group uh, in the previous approach actually can also react with acrylic group, which lead to uncontrolled structure. So we improved our uh, chemistry by doing ac acrylation first so that the pack is acrylated with acrylyl chloride and so that have this uh, double bound specifically at the end, terminal end of pack. And then we couple a pack to dangemer and then form um, a hydrogel. So by doing this, we can get a better uh, control on the structure and also by modulating the polymer chain length as well as the surface uh, loading density. So we are able to uh, modulate the, uh, the, the f uh, flowing properties such as O viscosity and gelation. And so in 
in this our for the application of a glaucoma, and we want we chose the uh, a formulation that a dangerous surface is partially cross-linked, so that still remain the uh, flowing. Uh, the, uh, uh, property, and then we can easily apply topically to the uh, eye surface. So the um, so our early work uh, uh, report in this um, uh, article uh, present uh, the enhanced uh, 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 transport of uh, uh, glaucoma drugs across uh, the the cornea, and also we show the enhanced uh, uh, residence time. On the eye surface, uh, due to the the charges um, on the dendromer, and uh, with my collaborators' uh, contribution, so we were able to test this uh, formulation uh, in uh, rabbits. Uh, so we um, use a saline as the uh, uh, a control, and so we can. So the uh, so this through the topical application, just one time we can see the formulation can show the efficacy by in controlling the intraocular uh, pressure for two days. So so we're really excited about this uh, finding since we haven't uh, 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 found any literature reporting uh, a formulation that lasts uh, longer than a day. So. Um, our through our um, observation window seven days and using floor uh, uh, spheres as the surrogates, we still can detect the uh, fluorescence uh, on the eye surface uh, uh, by using our formulation um, uh, after seven days. So this uh, so this work uh, really um, trigger us uh, to uh, uh, move on and also. Considering the the safety issue, because the uh, glaucoma medication rely on long term medication, so we have to solve the concern about using this formulation. So although we don't expect crossing dangerous to cross the eye surface, however, so we we need to. A look at the uh, mechanistic understanding about the transport and uh, a distribution of those crossing uh, dangerous. So we also look at the the photoinitiators we used. Um, so you can see. So we tested three commonly used uh, photoinitiators uh, that's used to prepare hydrogels, uh, DMPA, uh, Ergocure, and Usen Y. And so, not surprised that the uh, DMPA and Ergocure shows more uh, toxicity effects uh, than the use and why. However, we also want to know that because this due to the long term uh, uh, treatment, and so we want to see what really happened in, inside the cell. And so, my students uh, look at the uh, signaling pathway that could be potentially impacted by the use of. Uh, photo initiators, and also the for the photo initiated cross uh, cross linking polymerization. So the photo initiator will generate uh, free radicals, which could be a potential toxicity uh, source. And so we uh, look at the uh, the signaling pathway that involves AKT. So that's one of the major uh, signaling uh, pathway. Uh, Responsible for cell proliferation, migration, and um, uh, invasion. So we 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 check the the dose response in terms of the activation of uh, uh, AKT. So in the form of, of phosphorylated uh, AKT, and use image J to normalize the uh, the activation level. Uh, we can see that within the the concentration that can be used for gel formation, so D DMPA and uh, Ergocure show significant uh, inhibition on uh, PAKT. However, using Y is uh, more compatible and has a l uh, less 
impact on the activation of AKT. So that's really good. So that won't uh, impact the cell survival and the regu uh, uh, regular uh, uh, cellular activities. And then we uh, uh, shed UV light on those uh, photoinitiators that are commonly used uh, in, uh, in the polymerization. Uh, for uh, 30 minutes and look, generate free radicals. And to look at the toxicity of the free radicals on those, uh, on, on those cells. And um, uh, surprisingly, so we found that so the, uh, the, the free radicals actually uh, uh, also cause the, uh, the toxicity that's due to uh, even from the uh, EUS and Y group. So that's uh, give us some a uh, warning sign that uh, so using photoinitiators may not be a good option for uh, hydrogel formulation. So with this background um, and our early study, so we decided to use a novel chemistry called click chemistry uh, to develop a new formulation uh, of, um, uh, of, of the dendromic hydrogel. And so click chemistry actually was invented uh, a decade ago and by uh, sharpness. And a conventional uh, click chemistry happens between alkyne group and azide group to form a cyclo addition or linkage, a tri triazo linkage. And so this is a highly efficient uh, chemistry. And in, in particular, and those two compounds are now n natural, uh, naturally a uh, presents in the uh, living system. So there's no interference uh, uh, of those compounds with the uh, living system. However, there's one drawback using this approach is that the, uh, the, the, the catalyst has to be employed. So copper one is commonly used and also or copper two copper with uh, sodium ascorbate. And so we, we try this approach first and then we we show that we, once we couple alkyne to the dangerous surface and using a polyethylene glycol with uh, two azide groups uh, as a terminal group, so we had success uh, to uh, form uh, hydrogels uh, on the full generation and the half generation. And so this is the uh, uh, standard uh, procedure. So the, first of all, the uh, dangerous alkyne and PAC uh, azide are mixed, and so you can see that's clear solution. And with the addition of copper, so the solution turns in uh, blue. And as soon as the uh, the uh, uh, sodium uh, aspartate, the reducing agents, introduced to this solution, that forms gel instantly. So that demonstrates the high efficiency of this approach. However, and also we demonstrate that the drug can be in incorporated uh, in the presence um, the gel, and so the the SEM image shows the presence of those uh, drug particles uh, in the gel, and so the re as well as the release of the drug uh, from the gel. Um, uh, however, because the concern of copper, and also we have data to show that the copper is a concern, and then we move on to a a new version of click chemistry. Uh, called a uh, copper-free click chemistry. So, so that's first. So that's made uh, well known by uh, Dr. Bertels at uh, UC Berkeley, and uh, she uh, developed uh, the uh, strand alkyne. You can see, so this strain alkyne can readily react with uh, azide group without use of any catalyst. So the reaction is highly efficient. So we. In, by testing our first uh, generation of copper-free uh, dendromic hydrogel, so we check the dose toxicity response uh, profile and using uh, several cell lines, including uh, human corny uh, epithelial cells and uh, retinal pigment in the epithelial cells. So those two cells, and also we look at the, uh, the uh, inflammation marker uh, IL-1 alpha, and so we can see that uh, so the, the, the formulation has the uh, uh, shows the improved uh, efficacy. Yeah, that's my uh, last <laughs> slide. And so then we further confirm this the safety uh, using um, uh, by testing uh, this formulation, the plain formulation uh, in uh, in mice, and then we check the 
the uh, all the uh, IOP change. There's no change, and also we look at the uh, retinal uh, uh, ganglial cell function. So there's no change in the function, and also we count the the uh, the uh, 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 the uh, RGC cells and look at the uh, structure. So. Essentially, there's no change. So within our observation window, seven days. So we're very excited about these early results, and uh, we believe that our formulation is modular, and so that can in, in enhance deliver anti-glaucoma drugs in several aspects. And so the future work will be the the long-term safety evaluation and also the long-term in vivo PKPD studies. Uh, so finally, I would like to acknowledge my collaborators, Dr. Yudi Kampala uh, uh, from UC Denver, uh, my um, uh, VCU uh, colleague, uh, Chris Leffler, and uh, Dr. Asha Haid Hussein from um, uh, Medical University of South Carolina, as well as my uh, group lead, uh, members and the funding support. Thank you for your attention. Do we have time for a question? It's up or? To you. Okay, charge. let's let's take one question. question. Okay. Yes. Thank you. How do you sterilize these hydrogels? Right now, so we haven't yet gone into that step, and so the only way we did it is we use a sterile components and reagents, and to make sure uh, the the materials are sterile enough. However. The, there's one advantage of using our new version of uh, copper free clay chemistry formulation that so those material can be kept in dry form and powder form and so so that's why so they can possibly used for um, uh, making personalized ma medicine so when, so you can easily adjust the concentration and the dose, and then whenever needed, so uh, they can make a uh, form a uh, hydrogel. So that's our uh, ideal approach. Okay, well, I would advise trying to sterilize them either through filtration or some other mechanism because you're not going to be doing much in vivo work with them uh, unless they're sterile. Yes. Yeah, second, that's second question on your on your. Can we go back to the slide that with the first graph? <clears throat> that one. Uh, th this one. Uh, that one. So on the left, <clears throat> it's uh, drug versus control and saline. On the right, it's drug and the hydrogel versus saline. Yes. But when I compared drug and saline versus drug and hydrogel. I'm just trying to eyeball the numbers from the graph. I'm down at about 17 to 20, perhaps, on days one and days two in saline, and I'm down to 17 and 17 on days one and two, but I look at the error bars on day two in the saline, and I'm asking myself the question, drug and hydrogel versus drug and saline, are they different? Yes, they are, they are different, and so yeah, this actually so we have multiple time points uh, for <coughs> particularly for the saline group. So this uh, we can see that so the efficacy actually lost in after uh, two hours, and we did uh, statistical analysis, and uh, so I. I didn't put the uh, the marker here. Actually, so we compare the use statistics analysis compare these two. So the the way we did that, the there's one eye dose, one eye left uh, end dose. So we compare the difference, and so there's no difference here for this group. I have a quick question. Okay, thank you. You said that endomers don't uh, go into the cornea. Uh, or so it is not taken up by the cells? So that's our uh, excitation. However, we don't have uh, data to look at this. And so that will be our next step. Uh, we, we're going to label dangerous and uh, then use imaging tech, uh, tools and to monitor the di distribution of the dangerous. Okay. Thank you.